So you find a rare sample, you make a dope beat with it, you think you're all good, you think you're safe, because no one could possibly know what you sampled for this beat, right? And then you drop it, it becomes a big song. Sample snitches, they get you, they catch you. What happens next? I'm glad people like Kenny Beats exist in the producer community. They are beacons in the, in the producer community especially people like him who are in the middle of actively living what he's talking about living in the music business as a producer and yeah i gotta it looks like a dick thumb i was at urgent care today don't prepare food when you are in a rush don't do it but the youtube algorithm has been hitting me with some some good ones lately one of them was a video from kenny beats one of his live streams which i never catch so i'm grateful that a lot of people repost that content and it's incredibly appropriate because yesterday i created a dumpster fire on twitter with a tweet that Ask the question, how can you be a hip hop producer and hate sampling? I don't mean you don't like sampling yourself. I don't mean that you prefer not to sample. I don't mean that you dislike the sample clearance process. I dislike the, the sample clearance process. I make samples, I use splice. I don't always sample from records. If that's what I meant, that's, that's what I would have said. No, I mean people who disrespect the process of sampling yet claim to be a part of hip hop culture and are making money off of hip hop. Most people got it, I think, but there were a lot of comments talking about either, you know, everyone has a difference of opinion. So if someone's opinion is that sample based music was created by lazy and stupid individuals, that's something that we as hip hop cultural practitioners should accept because it's just a matter of opinion like what my hot take is that hip-hop is dead largely because people just let anything slide any disrespect for the actual culture of hip-hop how is calling sample based production lazy something anyone should defend when they're in this culture i don't i don't know you just called jay dilla lazy you just called rizza lazy you just called uh, marley Ma lazy you just called you know the entire golden era and the vast majority of present day hip hop album and their producers lazy metro booming one of his current hit songs is a sample from enya and an interpolation of a mario Winans song so metro boom is lazy everyone on the the last drake album lazy right uh dr dre lazy timberland lazy who else a dj premier lazy dj mugs lazy alchemist lazy just blaze like get the fuck out of here and i was thinking to myself every classic rap album contains samples and then i was like nah that can't be right so I'm, i was racking my brain trying to figure out which ones didn't i thought well, obviously, Wu-Tang, Gangstar, Public Enemy, Nas, Beastie Boys, Outkast, UGK, Ghetto Boys, MC Light, Boogie Down Productions, KRS-One, AZ, Jay-Z, Tupac, Notorious Big, LL Cool J. They all had samples in them. And then I was thinking, nah, maybe not like Bone Thugs and Harmony or, or Do or Die. And then I looked it up on who sampled. And yeah, there were a lot of samples, interpolations and replays on those classic albums as well. But what, what kind of gave me the precursor to a migraine was that I, I had to explain this. I thought everyone just knew that sampling was hip hop, but some people were swearing up and down that it's not. I mean, hip hop started from the DJ. Break dancers were dancing to the break. DJs were playing other people's music, rock music, disco music, funk music, soul music. They were isolating and looping breaks in real time that created breakdancing. Then hip hop producers who produced rap albums and rap beats were doing the same thing, looping the same James Brown breaks, looping soul records, eventually chopping soul records, scratching samples. This is something unique to hip hop. Hip hop has changed the landscape of music, period, because of its sampling ingenuity. It changed technology, it changed uh, music sonically, not just rap, I'm talking about it, everything, pop, EDM, every, it, it's influenced a lot of this. And, and yeah, I think the same applies to if you're like a house music fan and you hate sampling, you're also a weirdo. But let me stop ranting. I am going to watch this Kenny Beats video because he's saying a lot of stuff that I have a lot of thoughts about. Let's check that out. Oh, and shout out to um, Flicko. Is it Flicko or Flicko? I don't know, but he uploaded this video. I never said this last year. I don't know if I've said this ever. Maybe I have, and I just don't remember. But let me be honest. Until you're at a certain size, people are not going to come for you for sample clearance. This is not legal advice, either on Kenny Beat's part or my part. 
FYI. Just be real. Bro, I don't care if you talk to a publisher. I don't care if you talk to a label. I don't care if you talk to a sync company. It's very quickly. I think what he's meaning is even if all of these people from publishing companies, from labels, from sync houses say don't use samples because you'll get in legal trouble, that doesn't mean that that's necessarily true. What I will add is that if you are submitting beats for synchronization licensing, they do not play about samples. Yes, you can fly under the radar. I'm not saying this for myself. There's a producer right now that we talked about on a previous episode. I'm not going to bring any extra heat on him, but he has millions of monthly listeners on Spotify. He's not clearing a damn thing, and all his beats are full of the most blatant samples I've ever heard in my life. He is flying under the radar. You can too. But when it comes to sync, please do not submit beats with samples because you will really mess up your relationship with that person. You will really, trust me. Until you are a certain size, people are not gonna pull your songs down and people are not gonna find out about them. If they get a million plays, maybe they will. If people start, if they get really popular, maybe they will. Okay, I know for a fact that I have a song with a million plays from a very big artist. I mean, a huge artist. And this is a million plays on one particular platform. It's not on Spotify. I sampled and it is. it was not cleared. I have to agree. But if that's happening, then you might have some resources to get those samples cleared or mm. someone might come in to help you make that happen. Or you might be able to start building a team that can help you figure out what to do or whatever it is. But I'm not saying no one's listening. I'm not saying no one's paying attention. I'm not saying your music doesn't matter. I'm not saying you're making music that isn't gonna get heard. What I'm saying is, some of my favorite albums of all time, released in the last few years, released a long time ago, still to this day have uncleared samples all over them. And I'm not gonna say what it is. And I'm Yeah, no sample snitching. The other thing too, I'll share two more things. One, I interviewed Eastbound way back. The interview is on my channel, so you can just search for that. And he and Wonder Girl, right? Produced Antidote for Travis Scott. They didn't do this. The producers didn't do this, but it dropped. It was published on, I believe, SoundCloud before the label ever cleared that sample. And it didn't create that much of a problem for anyone. They just cleared the sample, then the label released it. This happens a lot. Labels are notoriously slow on business. That's the reason that a lot of us producers are chasing advances. I think that they're a little more responsive to legal matters like sample clearance, but Kenny's gonna get into that in a minute. Um, the other thing I'll say too is I've definitely, again, I'm not gonna say names, no sample snitching, but there are people, I've, I've experienced this, where a label or a manager or somebody is talking to me about a beat I made and I tell them, honesty is important, we're gonna talk about that, or Kenny Beats is gonna talk about it shortly, and I think that's the, the really big thing that to come out of this this video that we're watching but i've had people tell me yeah okay okay fine it's a sample but can we get away with it can you can you do something to it can you reverse it can you lie you know encouraging me to just keep my mouth shut about this being a sample they got away with it i'm not gonna say who the people are but there's songs that if i would say it right now this whole chat in loves not cleared to this day and there's not a lawsuit in sight i'll be honest yeah someone just said mad lib almost never clears samples people love hiding behind other people speak on what you know stop bringing other people's names into this i i despise when other people are debating and they're like well mad lib and well pharrell and and uh, well dr dre you don't know any of those people keep their names out your fucking mouth speak on what you know back to kenny that's not true. Yeah, it's There's not. So people, much oh, people, people love to speak on what they know nothing about. It mad lib music that is cleared on every single track, and that's the, the real truth. To be honest with you, we're not going to get into specific people. Just don't say it like that about people, because that's just as bad as snitching. That puts it in the air for people to go dig and go find out yep. and go sue somebody. You know what I mean? Shout but, out, shout out to Kenny I'll for say saying this that. Much. Yeah, there's songs that are ten times bigger than a million plays, 10 times bigger than 10 million plays that still have things in them that aren't cleared. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you worrying about your first project, your first beat tape, this first thing you're putting out. Remember I put out that entire video about how producers overthink everything. Kenny Beats is giving a, a lot of game here on you know, this, here's a 17 year old kid obsessing over everything that could go wrong with his very first 
beat tape release. The, bro, there are producers who are twice, three times this kid's age having that very same internal conversation, coming up with every excuse in the book to not pull the trigger on a release. Wait till there's a problem um, until you're a signed artist, until you're signed as a publishing deal, until you could get a bigger party in trouble, I'd say don't be so stressed about it. But that is true with uh, producers and artists. So remember, this is not the same advice. If you give a beat to an artist who's signed or an artist who's way bigger or an artist who has more followers, you might cost yourself that relationship or more relationships yep. and that song. If you sample something, don't tell that you sampled and then an artist puts it on their project and then they get sued and it gets taken off. Trust me, bro. They're not only gonna tell people that that happened with you and not to work with you, but they're not gonna work with you again. Yeah, don't, don't lie. The story I shared about the managers telling me to keep my, my mouth shut, that's on, on the artist's end. I'm not lying to a label. I'm not lying to a manager. I'm not lying to an artist about a sample. So please communicate that. What I've spoken on and a lot of people get upset with me about is that I talked extensively about uh, sample makers, loop makers, sending me loops with uncleared samples that they didn't create in them. They maybe sped them up, they maybe slowed them down, they maybe reversed them, they maybe chopped them, they maybe added a low lead and filtered out the sample, but they did not create that sample. So in my mind, it's like, wait a minute, you're sending me samples for me to make beats with, and then you want to cut. The value that you're creating is convenience. Why? Because sample clearance is a pain in the ass. Sample clearance is a risk. Sample clearance is a hazard. So why the fuck are you sending me loops that don't fix that problem and that actually complicate it more so because not only are you sending me uncleared samples that are going to have to be cleared and that are going to increase the likelihood that I lose every bit of equity in this beat, but also on top of it, you're asking me for a cut again. It doesn't make sense to me, but everyone's doing it. Every goddamn thing that I sample has to be cleared at this point in my career, and I have no option. I'm I would love, I'd love to be in that position. It's, it's probably a pain in the ass, but I'd love to be in that position. Kenny Beats is winning. Not getting away with it. You want to know why I'm not getting away with it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Every single one of y'all, and everyone on every single one of my platforms and track lib putting out videos about every thing i sample and who sampled you know what i mean having the songs that i produced up in 48 hours yep i'm at a point now where i literally have to clear everything louis i, I cleared 30 samples i'm clearing stuff that's not like no it's not i wish he <sighs> you guys in the chat gotta chill things that i'm putting drums under i'm clearing one word little things i'm clearing a string that only happens for 30 seconds. I'm clearing an acoustic guitar that got layered with something else. I got to clear in everything at this point because there's eyes on me and people debunk my beats the day I make. This sample snitching thing has been around for a while though, pre-internet. Uh, I don't, I don't remember, was it maybe the, you know what? I'm not even going to say that there was a, an, a vinyl only compilation series and a lot of people were upset about the sample snitching that was going on there. I know DJ Premier was one of the people. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's cool to be able to figure out what was sampled, but like Kenny is saying, a lot of people are putting a lot of unnecessary heat and it's always fellow producers that are doing that. And, and they feel like that's their right to do. And I, I guess it is, I guess, I guess people can do whatever they want, right? But it does have consequences for these producers that they probably like and respect quite a bit. Soon as a beat comes out that I've made, there's something the next day that's a fake version of it. Someone found Damn. a sample and is talking about it, whatever it is. Jeez. You guys got to understand though that there's people my size and people even bigger than me who get away with it. Mm -hmm. But you got to be honest, sometimes the worst thing is an algorithm, right? Like sometimes the worst thing is YouTube takes it down because they know the sample. SoundCloud takes it down because they know the sample. Actually, YouTube is the most forgiving. I know this happens all the time with splice loops even, but I don't get my stuff taken down from YouTube. I get my stuff demonetized. But he's right about SoundCloud, Facebook, any platform under the meta umbrella. And TikTok is terrible. They won't even let you upload your, your music. Oh, God, the worst is when I 
least beats out and one of the like maybe five people license the same beat and one of those people content ids it and then they're claiming that they own the beat and the song and everything and so that means they're striking down and preventing the other four rappers who legally license that track that i still retain ownership of they're taking all their shit down and then the rappers come back to me and they're like why why did my song get taken down it makes me look bad but the system allows to do, them to do that the content id systems allow them to do that these content id si systems are multi-billion dollar operations they don't care about creatives they don't care if their system is wrong people have abused that system two two people are about to go to federal prison because they abused that system so much by claiming songs they didn't even have anything to do with they made 23 million dollars off that it's crazy there's algorithms that umpg and uh wmg and all these companies mm. that control the rights to the music you're sampling they've developed algorithms that it's the reason why you go to upload something on YouTube or SoundCloud that says nope. And they got these musicologists who knows music and can tell you if you've stolen something or infringed on someone's copyright. I'm of the belief that just like any lawyer, they're just making a case for their client. If I hire a musicologist because someone sampled me and then the people that I'm suing who sampled me hire a musicologist, their musicologist is going to say, no, they didn't sample you. That's my expert opinion. And the one I hired is going to say, yeah, they did. And then it's just kind of up to the the court. I don't know. It's it's a crazy world. Hopefully, none of us ever have to experience that. But I've dealt with musicologists. As a matter of fact, when I was talking about my track Rodeo, where I replayed Genuine. I'm sorry, I said Genuine the last time. Genuine's Pony. I replayed that melody that that Timberland composed, just using the same Morpheus voice. A musicologist told. The record label that it was too similar it had to be a sample and i'm like how could i even sample that there are drums in it how would i get that clean of a sample so i don't know but these musicologists can be your best friend or your worst enemy i'm gonna stop it there support kenny beats i think it's an amazing video i think it's good practical advice but certainly not legal advice for you to take and run with 100 percent there are always risks i think overall his sentiment for you to not worry about every little thing and overthink everything is something that I absolutely agree with. I'm glad he shared his insight. Shout out to him. Um, if there's any other dope content out there that you feel like I should check out, please send it to me. I, I love that. That makes my life easier. So as long as it's not like producer beef stuff. So drop a comment. I appreciate that. Peace.